Welcome to another Telltale Books video. This video I'm going to talk about Gregory Benford because this video is going up on YouTube on Gregory Benford's birthday of January 30th. And I've been wanting for a while now to start a deep dive into his work. I, I have read some of his work, um, mainly short stories. Haven't really read a huge amount. I haven't read any of his best novels. And so I really wanted to get into Gregory Benford. He's, uh, the works I have read by him have, have been really great. This then is the start of it. And of course, going in order of publication, um, reading and talking about everything I can get my hands on, at least by way of fiction, by Gregory Benford. And I'm starting with his first published story. It's a very short, actually flash fiction story titled Stand In. Now, interesting background to this story. It was published in this issue of, fan of the magazine of fantasy and science fiction for June of 1965. And I love the cover on this. I think it's really cool. It's, it's not an illustrator I'm familiar with, but the illustrator did a really great job, I think. And it's a terrific issue. It's got Paul Anderson, Frederick Brown, Robert Arthur, Isaac Asimov, of course, Ron Goulart, and Gregory Benford. Um, Frederick Brown is in here with his story, Ina Klein and Nachtmusik, which is a classic. That's a really good one. And Judith Merrill does the book reviews in this issue. This is an excellent issue. And of course, the Isaac Asimov is his science column. And there's a short story by Roger Zelazny in this issue, even though he's not on the cover. It was pretty early in his career, I'm guessing. So the circumstances of the story stand in are that it was an entry into a short story contest with the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, which... The contest was to write a story based on um, what I believe to be a poem. Yeah, a poem titled From Two Universes that had been written by Doris Pitkin Buck, who back then did contribute a bit to the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. And so uh, Herb, Herb Lehrman is the guy that took first place with a story called The Ancient Last. And Greg Benford took second place with The Stand-In. I read both short stories. I would have had a, a difficult time deciding between the two of them because they're both really good short stories, or short, short stories, or flash fiction. They're both really good. And they're both really different. So I don't know how I could choose which one is the better. The Herb Lehrman... Now, Herb Lehrman only published this one short story in this contest. He published another short story in fantasy and science fiction in 1966, about a year later. Otherwise, he edited a short-lived science fiction magazine in the 1960s, and that's all I can find out about him. So I've already read 50% of his <laughs> fiction output. Um, but his, his story was really good, but both stories were on the subject of like I said, it's based on a poem by Doris Pitkin Buck, which dealt with the subject of the univac and the unicorn. Univac being a computer, unicorn being a mythical animal. Um, Univac was a very early computer. I think it was the first real business computer that came out. And by the by this time, 1965, it was already um, ancient history. It wasn't being used anymore. So both stories were written around that theme, and whatever other stories were submitted were all on that theme of the Univac and the Unicorn. The Lehrman short story dealt with the subject in a more traditional fantasy way of um, being more mythological and having more of a metaphor 
not really a metaphor. That's not really the word I'm looking for. I'm struggling for the exact word, but it's, it's more about life and death and, you know, some kind of big philosophical things. And it, it kind of goes into the past, more of what you would expect from a traditional fantasy story, a, a traditional um, fairy tale, folk tale kind of thing. Benford takes a completely different path. He has more of an urban fantasy. His story is set at a party at, a par at an apartment in a big city where the main character meets a unicorn and starts talking and, and the unicorn says, do you want to talk further? And so they go to the unicorn's place, you know, kind of, you know, kind of typical 60s kind of story, but the guy wasn't pursuing a woman. He was pursuing a unicorn, a mythical creature. Um, I don't want to go further into Benford's story than that. It's like I say, it's flash fiction, very short. Uh, the ending is really, really cool. It was a very different take on it. Very, very different from the Lehrman story, which is why I would, if I would have been the judge, I don't think I could have decided which one was the better story. They were both very good. So I really liked the Benford story, and I feel it was a very strong start winning that contest and, and getting published in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction for his first story. And, and the story was very well written. There's not a whole lot I can talk about it beyond that without getting into spoilers and, and just ruining the story for you. I think you should look it up if you like, well, if you like kind of urban fantasy, a little bit humorous kind of uh, short stories, then it's worth looking up. It hasn't really been collected in Gregory Benford's book collections. The only place I could get a hold of this, and this isn't even available as a PDF online, I had to look for this used and get this copy of Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction before I could read this story. Um, I really wish somebody would come out with a collection of Benford stories that would include this story. I think it's worth it. I really think it's worth it. Um, I thought it was a good story. So are you lucky enough to have read Stand In by Gregory Benford? Or if you have any other thoughts about Gregory Benford, please leave comments. I want to, leave, want to read comments. I would love comments that prompt a discussion. Would absolutely love that. So leave your comments on this video. I will respond to, to some degree. I mean, if there's not really much more I can say beyond your comment, I'm just going to say a thank you or you're right or agreed or something like that. But I will put something in response, if, even if it's just a thumbs up. But I would, love re I would love comments where I can join in and we can have more a little more of a conversation. You know what I mean? That would be wonderful. So... Um, leave your comments, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, come on back. I'm going to be going through everything I can get my hands on by Gregory Benford. And, um, I do have a fair number of his novels already and some of his short stories. I do have some collecting to do. I think I'm, because he's a living author yet, I feel certain I can get a hold of everything he's done and, uh, at fiction wise. And maybe some nonfiction if any of it sounds interesting to me. But I'm not going to get into like book reviews, articles, or, or the, when Asimov died and no longer wrote the science column for, for Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction, Gregory Benford took over. He is a scientist. He is a physicist. He was involved in quasar research, if I recall correctly. So he is a real science fiction writer. And uh, I'm looking forward to going through all of his work and hopefully seeing some new stuff coming out. He's, he's getting up there in years, though, so maybe he's not going to write anymore. I don't know. He doesn't have to. He's written a lot of great work. We've got a lot to enjoy, and I've got a lot to dig through. And so I hope to see you again. I will be here. 